hi and welcome back to Settle in Spain. I'm Amanda. I'm here outside our house in Andalusia and the good news is we have now officially moved in. I am joined on this journey by my husband Dave, our dog Otis and our cats Chewy and Impy. It's been far too long since I shared a video with you. Life got in the way but we are well, the animals are well, and we are now back. Now that we're living in the house, there's gonna be a little bit more time to edit and get some videos out there for you. These things take a ridiculous amount of time to do, and time is something that's been very precious. We needed to complete quite a few tasks and get in here, and we also managed to have a little holiday to Italy. I'm gonna share with you in this video a little bit of a journey to getting us into the house, and that will get you up to date with where we are right now. Having managed to move about 99% of our belongings and the dog, the next day I took David to the airport. It was time for him to return to work. And when I got back from my drive to the airport, I went and collected the cats to move them into the house with us at last as well. For the next few days of that week, it was a matter of clearing out the last things from the house and going back to clean the house as well to make sure we gave it back in pristine condition. Uh, quite poignant driving away from there. We'd been living there for two years. Although we will return to that little hamlet to visit friends, it was the last time leaving as a resident of the place. How you doing boys? Are you ready to go into your new home? Are you? Come on then. Come on. It's been a long day, but worth it. <laughs> Come on then you. Come on, in the house. Come on, let me go. Come on, you're going to be tired. Yes you are. Almost as tired as those cats. So just to give you a little bit more background information on this, this was now late August and this was the day there was a glitch with the air traffic control system in the UK that Dave was flying back. So I'd actually hung around at the service station closest to the airport just in case his flight was cancelled and he needed to come back home again. So having hung around until his flight was nearly ready to take off, it was quite late by the time I got back that day. We also had a heat wave. Yes, we moved in August in the middle of a heat wave. It's not the first time, it will be the last time we ever do that, I promise Dave. After having a really good look around and a good meow from Impy, he is very vocal, I then gave them something to eat. It was long past their dinner time and this meant they soon felt really very much at home in their new home. Otis is more than happy with the position of his bed in the area we're now living in the house. We're camping out basically in two rooms upstairs. Over in that corner there we've got a shelf with tea and coffee making stuff and somewhere to plug it all in to make ourselves a nice cup of tea or a nice coffee. There's a table over there for working on, that's where I'm sat right now doing the editing. And the doorway just to the right of the table there leads through to a room which we're using for storage right now and um, as a bit of a dressing room. This then is our main room at the moment for living in, sleeping, eating and working all upstairs at the front of the house. The favourite spot for an Otis is underneath the table. Then if he falls asleep and we move, it'll wake him up and he won't miss anything. 
through now to that first room at the top of the stairs where I was feeding the cats and dog and this one we're setting up as a kind of kitchen workroom area we've got a fridge and a freezer and we're bringing in some different tables to use and this then is the view out that side from that door and from the window in the main front room there now time to get you caught up and starting with Dave's road trip which I'd promised you at the end of the last video in our old VW T4 and I say old because it is it's 23 years old first registered in the year 2000 he left in mist driving across the outer plano there towards uh, Chiraville and Velas Rubio you couldn't see the mountains normally we have the most stunning views going across there the reason for this trip then was for him to go back and help his sister to clear out his mother's house. She was moving into a care home and the only way to get the things back that he wanted to keep was to take our old van. So quite the journey it was that he went on. Well, I've been driving for the best part of an hour now. I've managed to cover the massive amount of 62 kilometres. I've got a feeling this is going to be a long, long journey. Um, luckily the stereo is packed up. I'll have a look at that when we, uh, when we get into a service station. And the water temperature gauge also has decided that it doesn't want to work. But it's not making any odd, odd sounds or it's just driving the way it always has done. So um, yeah, I'll just keep on plodding. <laughs> Look a bit like a jihadi in this tunnel. So, Amanda's <clears throat> kindly packed me off with uh, a load of food and coffee and bits and pieces. I've eaten the sausage rolls that I've been driving in true truck driver fashion. And um, yeah, just about to have a, a nice cup of coffee here. And there we are. There's my evening meal. Cup of coffee and sunnies and there's tomorrow's breakfast. For those of you who don't know or those of you who are new to the channel, Dave and I are still working. We're not retired. Uh, YouTube is not our full-time job. In fact, we've yet to make any money from it. And Dave has to go away to work. He works two weeks away and then comes home for two weeks. So this trip meant the two blocks of two weeks, he was not actually here to help work on the house. He came back, got the van, drove to the UK, then began to sort out things at his mother's house, went to work for two weeks and then back to his mother's house to do more sorting out and then drove all the way back here again. And by the time he got back here, it was then time to go back to work. There was no time to be here at all in those two months. It was something he had to do. And that's kind of what we mean when we say life gets in the way sometimes, as I'm sure it does for many of you as well. Nearly up to 100 kilometers an hour. Well, that's indicated on the speed up. The other maps are telling me it's um, about 96. Here I am, about an hour from San Marlo. I've just um, stopped off a quick rest and had a bit of a fiddle about with the camera and get my bag ready to take onto the ferry, bits and pieces like that. Um, and I've stopped in one of these little airs, which are all the way up France. Um, some have got petrol stations and shops, some don't. And I've been stopped by customs twice today um, at these little airs. And I've had the van virtually stripped to pieces. I obviously um, look a bit dodgy <laughs> and there's no doubt about that. Maybe I need to uh, get rid of the hat. Um, but there's been lots of questions and mainly they're looking, well they appear to be looking for drugs, alcohol, money, just general smuggling stuff. But at one point 
I was taken away from my van and somebody went through the um, through the entire cabin, took the whole cabin to bits, um, found my spare passport and I'd forgotten I even had two passports to be honest with you but I do from many many moons ago when I was um, a mysterious travelling man. Um, anyway that caused a lot of confusion. Also all the stamps in my passport, um, obviously now that we're out of the EU, plenty of stamps in there for Amsterdam a few times I've flown um, with KLM that caused a bit of consternation the strangest thing was though he was going through my vehicle documents <laughs> and um, Amanda had hidden my Valentine's Day card in there which she was obviously going to tell me about in about 14 days no in about four days time but anyway he found this card this envelope and the card inside it was quite fancy you know it had a certain feel to it so unfortunately Amanda I had to I had to open your uh, Valentine's Day card because French Customs wanted to have a look inside it which uh, everybody's a little bit embarrassed about but uh, yeah, anyway there you go there's no Customs people here um, in this in this lay by anyway uh, and hopefully I won't get to, won't have to take the van apart again <laughs> not even particularly nice about it to be honest with you they don't even tidy the thing back up again. Um, there you go. Well, this is still going well. 1,800 kilometres we've, we've done in the last couple of days. Um, had a few minor niggles, but uh, so far not doing too badly. It's <coughs> me in my what can only be described as a pretty bijou. Exhausted, Dave did return to blue skies, I'm glad to say, and a very happy dog and a very happy wife. Luckily, the vehicle didn't break down in any serious way. There were a couple of issues with the radio and I think a radiator maybe, and definitely the heater wasn't working at one point, but nothing too serious. It got serviced in the UK and he came back in one piece, thankfully. Despite those cold temperatures that we were getting, it was time for me to get away from the fire and go and find out a bit about the plumbing. This is where Derek, our wonderful neighbour, came in and helped us once more. He taught me how to do some plumbing. We took out the old metal pipe work that went up over the staircase there and down into the bathroom it was all corroded it was in a terrible state and put in some new plastic stuff directly from the water mains with a new regulator on there because the power of the water coming in is really really high here some of you might have spotted there that is also a new gas boiler when we first bought the property there was a very old electric water heater outside in that corner which you saw me and Dave remove in the last video so Derek helped me fit this new gas boiler as well as sort out the water going to it and going into the bathroom this is an outdoor bathroom. You step outside the back door and straight opposite there is the door into the bathroom itself. Initially it had 
toilet, bidet, sink and shower. We've taken out the bidet, we took out the bathroom sink. Here Derek is cutting the hole in that board that David had created to drop a kitchen sink into. So the room is going to have kitchen sink, shower, toilet and washing machine. Basically it's going to cover every need until we've built both a bathroom inside and a kitchen inside. I've never done any plumbing before. Derek showed me how to fit the kitchen sink. So I was then able to take it apart and remove it in order to tile the top of this temporary work surface. I was concerned that it was going to disintegrate quite quickly. It was only fiberboard. So I've given it a coat of paint to start with to protect it. And then I got some tiles given from a friend. I think they were originally pool tiles and put those on. At this stage, I should also admit, I've never done much tiling before. And initially, I put the pool tiles on upside down. I had to quickly remove them all and relay them as quickly as possible as the tile cement was going off. I'm gonna call that done. It is only a temporary sink. Ta-da! Clean it tomorrow. Driving to and from the rental house to get work done is a beautiful drive, but also it's wear and tear on the vehicle, it's fuel, it's time, and it's time we just didn't have enough of, which is why your videos weren't getting edited and put together. I was taking them, I just didn't have the time. So, having learnt a bit about plumbing and electrics already from our friend and neighbour Derek, it was now my turn to turn my hand to something else completely new. This time I'd been on Google, I'd been on YouTube, I'd even read a book or two. And it was time to mix up some concrete. So it turned out the mixing concrete, I was okay with that, it was quite heavy going. We haven't got a concrete mixer yet, though we have plans to get one really soon. And this was only a small amount I was doing. All I was laying was a very small slab to put a log burner onto. Well, hopefully I managed to record some of that because, guys, that's the first time in my life I have ever mixed and laid cement. Fingers crossed. We might have a base for a fire. Right now, it's nearly 6 p.m. I've got a load of wood being delivered over at the rental in an hour, so I've got to clear up here and get across. The next job I decided needed doing was sorting out this wall behind where the log burner was going to go. There was nothing straight about it. There was gouges out of it, there was lumps sticking out of it. The first thing I did was actually get um, a bit of a grinder on there and try and take some of the bigger lumps off and then just thought I'd have a go at plastering. First time I'd ever done it, mixing it or using it and actually it was okay. It's not too bad, it's certainly better than it was when I started. Those of you that have been watching for a while will recognise Sophie there, Otis's friend. She was over to stay again at this stage and they were both more than happy to follow what I was doing. I think I just promised it was nearly time to finish and we were going to be heading home for dinner soon. That's that waggy tail and what that's for, I think. Now, originally the plan was for me to lay the slab get those walls nice and smooth, tile the slab and tile the walls. Things didn't quite go to plan. Firstly, my slab wasn't level. It wasn't even slightly level. It was completely out. Well, it might have been right in one direction, but not in another. And it wasn't deep enough for what we needed to do. 
So thankfully our friend and builder Sammy came along. He was going to fit the log burner for me and he took my slab up and relayed another one and then showed me exactly how to get the thing nice and level. I shall certainly remember this lesson for next time. You can just see the small round log burner on the left hand side of the screen there that Sammy's fitting in that space for us. The chimney was quite an interesting job. We took it up through the roof and then realised there's an electrical wire coming across there quite low down. So the chimney's a little lower than we had hoped. We haven't lit it yet, but we're going to be doing a test lighting of it really, really soon. This then, it's not exactly a tour of the house, but it's a little look at how some of it is laid out. That was going from the front door, towards the back, up the stairs that were on the left there, up to the first room, which is currently my little kitchen area and animal feeding room, and through to the room we're using as a living room. And here you can see almost what it looked like in its bare state. At this stage we'd already got the electrics in, we'd got that one window changed, the log burner is in and I'm just finishing off plastering in where the electrics have gone so that we haven't got great big crumbling holes in the wall while we're living in here. Most of the windows in the house are just like this. They're original, probably handmade. There's no glass. Bits of light, as you can see, are coming through the holes there. They've got bars on them for security and you can see out across the old roofs here, the buildings next door. They are all going to need to be replaced and that's going to be one of our next priorities is sorting out doors and windows in the property now that we're living in it. That's the view out front there onto the little hamlet itself that we're on the corner of. You'll notice there that David was looking through an old window that has now been replaced with the one that I was sanding down in one of our previous videos and it does look amazing. Now on this you see that I'm using Yeso to plaster these walls. We do have intentions of doing lime plaster eventually. At the moment the existing walls in places have already got yeso on them as these have so putting a bit of yeso in here at the moment is just our fix for now until we can get the old yeso off and use lime once more so here we are down on mohata Blyer. we've come down here today to pick up a washing machine from a little town just a little bit inland but we're a bit early so we actually popped to the supermarket, got ourselves some sandwiches and a drink and we've come down to the beach and here we are at the beach. Oti's a little bit scared of the seagulls and all the new things because he doesn't get to the beach much. There's Amanda making sure that he doesn't go astray. <laughs> yeah. The van is not in camper van mode yet, it's still in washing machine pickup mode. Um, it's the Thursday before Easter, so all the shops are shut early. So we've got our, we've got our shopping in the back there. Um, there's a sack truck for picking up the washing machine. Um,
this is my morning walk with Otis now that we're living over at our house. It's a beautiful walk. It's lovely to have the sunrise on my back. He's really enjoying all the new smells because there's so many more people and dogs and things going on around here. I think this particular route has a few foxes and things that cross over it quite regularly as well, judging by his excitement at certain times of the day. I realise that we've nearly reached the 30 minute point and that's kind of the sweet point when it comes to some people and YouTube videos and that's where I try and keep ours at to half an hour so that you guys can get on and continue with your life. But don't worry, I will be back next week. We will be back next week when I'll bring you completely up to date. You still need to see the window going in, which was an amazing experience. I'm hoping I've learnt enough that we can do the rest of them ourselves or some of the rest of them ourselves, hopefully. There's also the converting of our van into a camper and our trip to Italy that we did in the van. So we will see you next week. To all our subscribers, I just want to say a huge thank you for coming back, for sticking with us, and I hope you're going to continue to follow us. For those of you that are new, welcome. Uh, please do click on those links and subscribe and comment and, and do all the things that you do on YouTube anyway. I hope you enjoy this. This is the end of the walk, and I'll see you next week on the next one. Thank you, friend.